Welcome back to my garage. Today we're not gonna work on the piston problem. Thanks for all the comments. I haven't been able to read them all. I haven't been able to re reply to them all. But uh, I will as soon as possible. And um, we got a few solutions going. Uh, Mark is working on a new, like a version 2 with, or version 3 actually, with a, with a step built in. So positive luck without relying on like without that wobbly thread thing going on and um, and also we're going to machine up some spacers for for the existing pistons to work today we're gonna sit back relax or actually you're gonna sit back and relax while I'm getting this thing mounted in the machine in the in my CNC machine and uh, we'll do a test cut so that's the plan for today we'll have to slightly modify the mount this, uh, this drop-in replacement is actually a tiny bit smaller than the, the old one, uh, no biggie. I started freaking out because there's a terrible noise here and I thought the bearings were shot, they feel good. Then I realized... Then I realized with how this motor is uh, motor is mounted of course there's a lot of noise because it's there's no 
no padding between the steel bars I welded in there and no padding between the, the steel at the bottom and, and the motor housing. So we'll need to slide in some, uh, some gaskets. Tear it down again, a couple of thin uh, rubber gaskets, some inner tube and should be golden. Got off to a late start yesterday, and by the time that uh, wooden piece was uh, was done, it was more morning than uh, night. I drank a lot of coffee. Bad choice. Few hours I had of sleep before work. Well, I couldn't sleep. So today will be just a short one. We're gonna try some aluminium instead in place of wood and uh, see how it behaves. If you're wondering why I'm using this long long reach tiny end mill holder thing with that tiny 5.5 millimeter end mill it's cause it's the only tool i've got i've i've got a bunch of holders a bunch but i've got no collets and i've got no end mills or i've got these and smaller ones but we'll get more get get some more suitable cutters It is reading a bit undersized. This is supposed to be 60 and I'm seeing uh, 59.75 and it, the same goes for this dimension which is, should be 40 and I'm seeing uh, 39.8. The finish on the sides here though is Looks like there's some shatter, so I shatter, 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 chatter, 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 like blah, 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 blah. I think it's a bit deflection because of that long tool holder, and um, and I might like I was spinning that tiny end mill at uh, just above 4,000 RPM. RPM. I'm not like I don't know how fast I can spin that motor. It sounds kind of not too happy when I go past 4,000. And that's far too slow for um, for that small end mill. And also, I um, I upped the feed rate from 250 millimeters per minute to 300 millimeters per minute, which isn't much, but um, might be too much with that tiny end mill and uh, and that speed. But what do I know? <laughs> and I was squirting squirting in a lot of VD40, probably a lot, like too much, far too much, but uh, paranoid. But hey, first ever metal part machined by a machine and not just a machine but a computer controlled, computer numerically, con numerically <laughs> controlled machine that's mine in my garage. 
this opens up a lot of possibilities. Like the possibilities were there before because of all the help I'm getting from you guys. But uh, I like doing things myself and now I can. With a little bit of tuning and some tools. Need some tools. Hooray. Thanks for watching.